transition into into from repairs into retail? Was it the natural progression kind of? Uh, well, I finally could not stand being in the basement of this music store for 11 years. It was like no windows, and every time it would rain, you know, the water would come in. So I just one day I just I've got to get out of here, and I finally found a place I could move to. This was in '79, and I was just going to do repairs only, and I was like rented this small little section of the building, and then the band I was in. There was some Sirwin Vega bass equipment that I borrowed and playing bass in a country band. I really liked it. Nobody was selling it. So I said, well, maybe I can get the franchise. You know, like, thanks. So I got that. And then I started buying guitars that were seconds from some of the distributors and fixing those up and then use things and get Simon. And then, yeah, then I said, well, I can do that. Then there's new lines. It was easier to get the new stuff. And it was like, Secondary lines like Washburn and Alvarez, um, not not the big Fender Gibson Martin mm -hmm. stuff. Those were tied up by the established yeah. music stores, but these newer second second tier ones did really well, and it just kept growing and <sighs> lived through the keyboard craze and uh -huh. the disco thing and the, uh, all that stuff. But then I got finally s sound equipment, did a lot of church installs and. Finally said, no, I want to do guitars. So I just went back to guitar, got rid of everything else, and just do guitars. So, so your mean. store opened in 79. Yes, you, the, the new store, right. Yeah, so you quit doing repairs for the store you'd been working for. Right. What was that store called? Fred Moore Music. Fred Moore Music. In, and that was in Lexington as well? Right, Chevy okay. Chase section of Lexington. And, uh, and then the, you started your store in 79. Right. And, and so I'm you, still at the same building that I yeah, got. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that on. I, I looked at your site and I, I, I read your bio. And, you know, I <laughs> want to get into that because at some point you, had, you said you had to make a decision about whether you had to get it bigger or not. And that was with the internet. But but before we get to that, so you lived through the the keyboard and the disco, right? So uh, what? We, we even sold spandex clothing for our own. <laughs> for well, the '80s rockers yeah. with the big hair, they couldn't get it anywhere. Yeah. 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 So a lot of pointy guitars too. Oh right? yeah, I like the the Jacksons, and we we're putting Floyd Roses on everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, yes. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. guys. I'm here at music night. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm sure that they're, they're yeah, like, yeah, we understand. We're there now. Yeah. Um, so you 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 thought you were diversifying into pro sound and and all these other things. Yeah, and then I you really decided. got into it. I really studied it, and I think I did a good job. You know, flying clusters and time delays on the systems and all that. So when did you, what year did you decide to just go back to Strictly Guitars? Well, I guess it started right in the late 90s, you know, where it started, that's where it started. It's not, it's not like one cutoff yeah, course, day, it was like, you know, selling down inventory and just not reordering. Um, and then I did a website, started that around 98. You know, so I saw the benefit of that because I'm, I'm a homebody and I, I like the store. I like I still like the name Rosemont Garden, the name of the street. Mm -hmm. I just like the name, so mm -hmm. so I still have that place. Although I've bought two buildings across the street, and we have a lot more space and can do more things. Are those storefronts as well? Um, one is my internet division, okay. and where we have the real high end stuff. It's not on display; it's stored there. I've got two really great sales guys and. You know, somebody calls in, they can pull out the instrument and talk about it. You can webcam it if you want. Um, and, that's, and then we have another building that's upstairs is a Lexington Music Academy, just lessons. Mm -hmm. And then downstairs is uh, corporate offices, warehousing, photography, um, and the repair shop. And for the first time, I have a repair shop with a window. It's got this long window in front of the bench. <laughs> nice. Which I'd always dreamt about. I never had it. Fantastic. So, when so. did you get that? How long ago? That was in the building, that, the, the big building. It was three years ago. Wow. So I've kept the old building, which I can look at through the window. But I, now I've got uh, some room, finally, nice. and light. Nice. And I've got fountains running in there to keep humidity up. But it's also real restful having that. So are you in the building with the music academy? And, yes, and they're the upstairs, offices? right. And the corporate offices and, and the repair center on the one side of the downstairs. The other side is the photography studio and the, where, well, part of the warehouse. It's where we take stuff in and go to ship, ship it out. Very neat. Uh, so we got about 15,000 square foot with the three buildings. 
Yeah, and that's enough. I mean, I'm, I'm not a manager type person. That's not what I do. So I, I do guitars. That seems pretty impressive for a non-manager. That's, well, that's pretty cool. I, I, can, I, I can see trends. I can see directions to go in. And I've learned to hire people who can do their jobs. Like my wife is a wonderful accountant and a supportive person. <clears throat> and then I've got a guy that's a computer genius who can keep everything running and the point of sale system and the, all these numbers and SKUs that you have to keep straight so we can make intelligent decisions.